Hi, and welcome to Jules Voto's Photo Focus. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Nikon's ES2 film digitizing adapter. Now, the ES2 was introduced along with the Nikon D850 DSLR, and it was designed to be used with Nikon's 60mm 2.8D, 60mm 2.8G, and the 40mm 2.8DX micro Nikkor lenses. But I'm also going to show you that it can be used with Nikon's 55mm 2.8 AIS. There was also an AI version of this lens, and most likely, although I didn't test it, should work fine with the 55mm 3.5 micro Nikkor. Okay, so in the box, uh, you receive the Nikon film digitizing adapter ES2, which has a diffusion plate in front, a piece of plexiglass. It has a little screw lock on top and it moves back and forth and rotates. All right, we'll get into exactly how it works in a few minutes. Um, also, you have adapter B, it's just for a 62 millimeter thread macro lens. The 62.8D, it screws right into the front of the lens. You also have an adapter A, which is for the 60 millimeter 2.8G, the newer lens. As far as the 40 millimeter 2.8DX, the adapter screws directly into it, it would, because that lens has 52 millimeter threads and this is uh, 52 millimeter male threads. Okay, you also receive a film strip holder. It holds a strip of six 35 millimeter negatives, either color or black and white, and also a two by two mounted slide carrier to hold 35 millimeter mounted slides. All right, so that's what comes with it. Of course, you get instructions. So let me show you how it attaches to a camera. So we're gonna be using the Nikon Z7 here. Okay, let's um, take off the body cap. Now, because these are F-mount lenses, the 60 millimeter 2.8D, which I'm going to be using here today, uh, and the 60 millimeter 2.8G, also a, um, an F-mount lens, you need the F to Z adapter. So let's put the F to Z adapter on the correct way. Okay, now we're gonna mount the 60 millimeter 2.8D. Now this is a CPU lens. So you make sure that the aperture is locked down to its minimum. In this case, it's F32, okay? Um, we're then going to take the adapter B, the larger one, okay? And we're going to attach that to the film digitizing adapter. It screws right in. Okay, you just tighten that down. And make sure the lock screw is tight when you screw this on so that the um, adapter doesn't rotate. Okay, now we're gonna screw this right into the front of the lens. It has 62 millimeter threads. It screws right into the lens, all right. Okay, now we're just gonna loosen this screw and line this thing up. And okay, it should, the screw should be on top and that allows you to um, insert the film holder. All right, and we're just gonna tighten it down for now. Okay, now we have it set up on the camera. Okay, so now we're going to insert either our negatives or our slides so we can photograph them. Um, I'm just gonna demonstrate first with the slide. First thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure it's clean. All right, so just take a blower brush uh, or compressed air. Give it a blast, make sure it's clean. If you notice any fingerprints, you're gonna to need to use a solution and carefully, um, carefully clean your negative or slide, okay? One thing with using compressed air, make sure you hold the bottle upright if you tilt it or turn it upside down. Some of the propellant is gonna come out and will damage your negative or slide. Okay, so we're gonna take the slide holder. And one other thing, uh, and this applies to uh, photographing either your slides or your negatives, um, if you photograph them from the base side, okay, the base side is the shiny side, 
Um, also, another way to tell the base side on a negative is you hold up the negative and you should be able to read the edge print. You know, a lot of times I'll have the manufacturer, Fuji or Kodak or, or whatever. Uh, also, the arrows should be pointing to the right, on the bottom pointing to the right, and then you will have the base side. And that, that is the correct way for your viewing, okay? Some people say, photograph the emulsion side, the dull side, okay? And you could tell the uh, dull side, you could tell the uh, emulsion side, I mean, if you're holding the negative and the arrows are pointing to the left and the writing would be reversed. You wouldn't be able to read it, okay? I have found it doesn't matter, really doesn't matter uh, whether you photograph the emulsion or the base. If you, um, if you photograph the emulsion side, now when you bring that photo into Photoshop, when you bring that image into Photoshop, it's going to be reversed, and you're going to take, need to take an extra step in Photoshop and flip it, okay? So it's oriented correctly. All right, so now we have cleaned our slide. We place it into the slide holder, and I'm putting this in with the base side facing me, so it's oriented correctly. And let's just put two in. It'll hold up to two. And it pretty much just put them in and push them down. There's no very little play in it, so that's good. All right, now we're going to take the slide holder and just insert it into the digitizer, and it kind of locks in place. Now what we need to do, and you can do this either using Live View or, or looking through the viewfinder, you're going to get everything lined up properly. Okay, you loosen this screw, and you can move the digitizer back and forth. You want to fill the frame with the image, and then you're going to focus carefully, okay? I think um, these macro lenses, the 60, both 60s and the 40, go to one-to-one, -to -one, and you need to be one-to-one -to, -one to fill the frame, okay? So I think it's easier to just set the lens to one-to-one -to, -one to, to its minimum focusing distance, okay? And then just move the digitizer carefully back and forth to focus. And again, it will rotate, so you just want to line everything up, looking through the viewfinder, get it in sharp focus. And once you do that, you lock it down. Okay, you lock it down nice and tight. And then you're set. I mean, any additional slides you want to put in, as long as you don't move anything, as long as you don't, you know, loosen this screw, you should be okay and be in focus uh, again, of course, you don't want to touch the focus ring. Now, so now the next thing is, well, what do I use for lighting? All right, but before I get to that, let me just tell you how I set the camera. And, uh, you know, this is all open to experimentation, you know, whatever works best for you. Uh, this camera has a low ISO. The lowest ISO is 64 to give the very best quality, so I set it to 64. I'm actually using auto exposure. Um, uh, as far as your picture control, I just have it set to standard. Uh, I, you know, if you're shooting black and white, you could have it set to monochrome. I haven't found that makes much difference, okay? But the big thing is lighting. And, and by the way, um, I have image stabilization turned off, okay? And um, let me explain the reason for that. You don't have to worry about camera movement. Everything, it's all one piece here, basically, right? So if you move the camera as you're shooting, if you're using, let's say you're using a sh slow shutter speed and you move the camera, it's not going to affect the image at all, okay? Unless you moved the slide carrier or the digitizer or of course, if you, if you move the focus ring. So movement will not affect um, the image quality, okay? So you don't need image stabilization. I even haven't tried it with image stabilization on. I don't, th it's not necessary. In fact, um, during this experiment, experimentation phase, I uh, used an exposure of five seconds for one of the image, and as I was shooting it, I moved the camera, and it was just as, sharp as the image 
where I didn't move the camera, okay? Because really, again, nothing is movement. Uh, nothing is moving. Uh, you will get camera movement uh, blur uh, if you're photographing a, a landscape, let's say, and you move the camera, right? Because the camera is moving relative to the subject. Here, the camera isn't moving relative to the subject, and the subject in this case is our negative or slide. It's all one piece. Okay, so don't worry about uh, camera movement if you're going to do this handheld. All right, so let me get into the lighting. Uh, the first images I did using the, the first um, negatives that I digitized using the ES2 was for a recent video where I wanted to compare image quality between digital and film. And I had uh, my film scanned at the lab for high res uh, uh, high-res scans at the lab, and I then wanted to digitize that same film myself using the ES2, okay? And my setup for that, I put the camera on a light stand, I put a white piece of poster board down, uh, used a ring light, and you can see in this picture, just basically shows my setup, and I did it that way, and that worked fine. For this video, I wanted to try different types of lighting. So the first thing I did, I uh, went to my computer monitor and I opened the file in Photoshop, a, a, a new file that was 12 by 8 with a white background. That's basically it. And that, that image filled the monitor. And I just handheld the camera, basically like you see here, aimed it at the monitor and using auto exposure, aperture priority, uh, shot a series of images. And they were fine. I also wanted to try another method and that was to shoot using window light. Um, so I did, I went up to my kitchen, took a seat, and it was a cloudy day, and uh, I used auto white balance again. I also experimented using um, a cloudy um, um, white balance, a, a you know, white balance for, for uh, a cloudy day. Uh, really didn't see much difference. Uh, Handheld the camera and shot through the window. And then I wanted to try one more thing. I set the camera up on a tripod and um, used an LED light pointed directly, was maybe a foot or less in front of the um, plexiglass diffuser on the, um, on the ES2, and I shot some that way. And they all worked, or the images were fine. The thing you want to make sure is that the, the, your lighting is fairly even uh, in front of the digitizer. Uh, I think the easiest way to do it is to use that window light. If you have a good window, uh, I, you don't want direct sun coming through that window, I don't think. Um, I was fortunate when I did these uh, uh, tests, it was cloudy each day. But uh, that worked out really good. Um, if you're going to do a bunch, I would suggest um, putting the camera on a tripod just so you're not holding it all that time. Again, you don't need a tripod as far as what we normally would use a tripod for, and that is to steady the camera. The camera doesn't have to be steady. You could be moving around when you shoot these. Uh, but if you only have a few negatives or slides, just hand hold it. You know, sit in front of the window or stand in front of the window, and um, it works out great. Let me just show you now how to place a slot, uh, excuse me, a negative in the negative holder. So the negative holder is hinged, you just open it up, and I have a strip of six black and white negatives here. Actually, I found some old negatives. Uh, I have probably tens of thousands of black and white negatives. That's primarily what I used to shoot years ago. And these date from 1974. It was the Von Steuben Day Parade, and I'll show you some images from that later. It was the Von Steuben Day Parade in Philadelphia in 1974. Okay, so we're going to place these down. I don't, I'm not wearing cotton gloves. You probably should be wearing cotton gloves when you do this so you are not getting fingerprints on your negatives. 
okay? So it just locks in place, okay? And again, same thing, you're gonna place this in. Now, the one thing I suggest if you're going from slides to negatives, you should line this all up again, okay, and refocus because um, the slides are in the cardboard mount and are at a slightly different distance from the lens than the, uh, than the negatives are. Okay, now we're going to get into in a little bit, I'm going to show you what happens once you take the picture, okay? And now what you have is a photograph, a digital image in your camera of a negative or a slide. And of course the negative, it's going to be a negative image. Now unless you're using the Nikon D850, okay, or the Nikon D780, they have a digitizing mode built into the camera. So you will set the camera for that mode, photograph your negative, and it will give you a positive file, okay? Um, it will give you a JPEG with the negative reversed into a positive, inverted into a positive. Uh, but before we get into that, let me just explain about the 55 2.8. As I said earlier, um, the ES2, when it was introduced, and the instructions will tell you, it's for the, the 260 millimeter macros or the uh, 40 for a DX camera. But I have a 55 2.8, and I figure, well, let me see, maybe that will work. Okay? So what I discovered is that it does work. Now, the way I have this set up, I didn't quite get to one-to-one, -to -one, so I got a little bit of extra space around my digital file when photographing negatives or slides. Of course, that's easy in Photoshop or Lightroom just to crop that out. But the way it worked was um, what I needed to do was use the adapter A, the smaller adapter, okay? For the 60 millimeter 2.8D, I needed adapter B, the longer one. And problem was, this would not fit directly into the 52 millimeter, uh, into the uh, 52 millimeter threads of the 55 2.8. So I had to use step up rings. And I had to use three of them. I did not have a step up ring that went from 52 to 62. So I, what I had to do is use a 62 to 58, and then a 58 to 55, and then finally a 55 to 52. What that did, is when I screwed the adapter with these step-up rings into the lens, it pulled the adapter away from the lens a little further than if I had had an adapter just to go from the 52 millimeter filter thread on the camera to the 62 millimeter thread on the adapter. Okay, and I think that is the reason why I could not fill the frame. All right, uh, so once you do that, Okay, so now that is attached with these uh, step-up rings. I'm just going to take this off of the 60 millimeter macro, and then I'm going to unscrew this adapter B off the digitizer, and then the digitizer screws in to adapter A. All right, and there we go. And uh, I then attach this to the camera. Well, might as well do it. Okay, so we're going to take the 60 off. We're going to put the 55 2.8. Uh, now, mistake. The one thing with the 55 2.8, it does not go to one to one without an accessory. All right, the 60 millimeter macros focus to one to one without any additional uh, extension tube. The 55 2.8 requires the PK13 extension tube. It's a 27.5 millimeter extension tube. So we mount this to the F to Z. Then we mount the 55 2.8 to the extension tube, and this will take us to one to one, okay? Um, now, one other thing. Since the 55 2.8 macro and the older 55 3.5 macro are not CPU lenses, you have to set the aperture on the lens and also set the non-CPU lens data in the camera. 
And if you're going to use an auto mode, you can only use aperture priority. You set the aperture, the camera selects the shutter speed. So I did this. And by the way, the, the aperture I use uh, for all these uh, tests was f8. You don't want to shoot wide open. Uh, you want to shoot at the sharpest aperture of the lens. And usually the sharpest aperture for these lenses is around f8. You could probably also use f11. Um, so uh, it, it worked out fine. I mean, I couldn't tell the difference between the images with the 55 from the images with the 60, other than the fact that uh, I had to do a little cropping with the images shot with the 55 2.8. So now we're going to go over to uh, Photoshop and Lightroom. I'm going to show you uh, how you go from a digital image of a negative and turn that into a positive. All right, so now we're going to look at some images. So I opened up Bridge, and these are some black and white images and, uh, that were shot uh, almost 50 years ago, 1974 at the Von Steuben Day Parade in Philadelphia on Plus X Pan, uh, which was a 125 speed film. Uh, and just real quick, the reason I originally purchased this ES2 was primarily to, to digitize black and white film. I have thousands, tens of thousands probably, of uh, black and white negatives. And also currently I shoot some black and white uh, and uh, I wanted to be able to digitize it myself. Um, you know, I could send the film to a lab and have it scanned. That gets to be expensive. So I could develop the film myself and then digitize it myself. So, uh, all right, let's look at this image. Now, I shot both JPEG and uh, RAW files, but let's just, uh, let's just look at this JPEG. Let's open it up in Photoshop. And you could see I wasn't precise in aligning the ES2. So you see a little bit of the edge of the negative here and on that side. So we're just going to... Just crop that just a little to get rid of that. Again, if you don't line it up exactly, it's not the end of the world. You could easily fix it. All right, so let's make this a little bigger. And now we're gonna to go to image, okay, at the menu at the top, image, adjustments, and come over here to invert. Boom, and we have a positive. Now it needs a little bit of work. We're gonna to go to image, adjustment, Levels, we could also use curves. Okay, we're just going to bring in that black point a little bit and, and just darken it using the midtones. And we got a halfway decent black and white image. Okay, now we're going to look at a color image. I have some color transparency here, some color slides, but first I just want to show you how to do a negative in. Photoshop. So we're in Bridge. I'm going to open this one up. This was, I believe, Kodak Gold 400. And this also was fairly old, at least 20 year old negative. Okay. And again, needed to crop it a little bit. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to Image, Adjustments, Invert. Now, a little washed out, okay, a little too light. So I'm gonna show you an easy way to fix an image like this when you have a um, black point, something that you know is black and something that you know is white. Let's go to levels. Again, you can do this in curves. I'm gonna click on the black eyedropper, click on these black straps here, okay, then click on the white eyedropper and this area up here I know is supposed to be white right click on that and a little too much contrast a little too light maybe so let's just go to uh, actually too much saturation so let's lower the saturation a little bit okay okay again a quick way um, to turn your negative into a positive all right, now let's look at one more thing while we're in bridge. We're going to look at an ectochrome slide, all right? And this, um, this was shot with the 55, I believe. Uh, and you could, see, you could see some of the cardboard mount around it, all right? 
this is with the 55 micro and again it's not quite one to one so we're just going to crop that in a little bit and I think again if I had had the proper step up ring just a single ring rather than having to use three of them as I mentioned earlier uh, I would have been able to get to one to one but even if I couldn't even if I was a little bit off again it's easy enough to just do a slight crop in Photoshop or Lightroom. All right, now this is an image that I think um, would work out better if I opened up the raw file because uh, I could, I think the building needs to be a little lighter, the sky needs to be a little darker. This would be easy to do in, um, in Lightroom or Camera Raw. And let's open the raw file. Okay, so now we're in camera raw. Uh, not going to worry about cropping it right now. I just want to show you how to do this. So we're just going to go on the shadow slider. Just move it to the right a little. You notice the building getting lighter. And we're going to take the highlight slider, move it to the left. And you can see we got some detail in that sky. So, I mean, you could play around with this and get it exactly, adjust the color a little bit. Uh, this slide probably faded a little bit over the years. Again, there's so many uh, options you have. You have more options, of course, with the raw file. And I'm going to show you how to convert a negative, a color negative, into a positive using Lightroom. Okay, and um, what we're going to do, we're going to come down here to the tone curve. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do some black and white as well. Uh, go to our tone curve and we're going to go to the individual channels red green and blue and adjust them individually so we go to red first we're going to take this side of the curve move it up move it over just to the start of the histogram we're going to do the opposite on the other side move it to the end of the histogram and come straight down now we're going to go to the green channel do the same thing all the way up to the top, over to the start of the histogram. Okay, now we go to the highlight side, move it all the way over, and bring it all the way down. Now we're starting to see, we're starting to get a positive here. Now we go to the blue channel, and we bring it all the way up to the top, slide it over to about the start of the histogram, and do the same for the highlight and bring it all the way down. Okay, now this was an image that was shot um, with flash. So the child's face is a little blown out, but we could come up here and make some adjustments. Okay, now normally, if you're adjusting highlights in Lightroom, you would move the slider to the left. In this case, since it's a reversed image, we have to move it to the right, and you notice the highlight's getting a little darker. And we could just play around with the image a little bit. I think it's a little, could use a little yellow. We're going to go opposite, okay? We're not going to go towards the yellow side. We're going to go towards the blue side to give it a little more warmth. Okay, so how about a black and white image? All right, so now we're going to go back to uh, an image that was shot that same day as those images of the uh, soldiers. And this Again, it's a black and white plus X pan image. We are now in Lightroom, of course. We're going to go to that tone curve. And instead of playing with the individual channels, we're just going to go to the RGB channel. And we're going to raise this slider all the way up. Come over a little bit. Raise this slider. I bring the slider all the way down at the start of the histogram. Maybe bring it in a little bit. You notice the image is getting a little darker. Okay, and we can make some further adjustments. I think uh, overall this image could go a little darker. I'm just going to slide it to the right a little bit, the exposure slider, and maybe do a little something with those highlights. Just darken them just a little bit. Okay, so that's how we do it in, in Lightroom. But that's basically it. So it's pretty simple. 
to, um, to do this. It's not that difficult. You don't need a lot of equipment. Uh, the ES2, I believe, was $140. You could pick up one of those 60 millimeter macros. Uh, I don't know. I forget what I paid for mine, maybe $250. Uh, or if you want to go and get the, uh, the uh, 55, you, again, you're going to, with the 55, you're going to need that PK-13 uh, uh, 27.5 millimeter extension tube. You don't need lighting. I mean, you could just use window light. You don't need a tripod. I think if you're going to do a lot of slides, it's probably better to have a tripod. You just have everything set up and you, uh, you know, just keep firing away. You don't have to hold the camera. So uh, lots of luck with this. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, my email is uh, in the description below. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I usually come out with a new video every Wednesday morning around 11 a.m. Eastern time. So thanks for watching, and I will talk to you next time.